when we're really, really present, we start to realize that what we're experiencing right now is all there is. So what we begin to understand is now, right now, is all we have and it's all we have ever had in the whole of our life. None of us have ever had anything else than right now. This is reality. Right now is reality. Right now is the whole of your life. In the future, all you'll ever have is right now. In the past, all you ever had was right now. And we forget that. <coughs> so whatever you've done in the past, if there are things that you've regretted, anyone have stuff that they've regretted? Maybe a few things? Yeah? Do you carry that with you? You do, don't you? Does it exist? No. Right now is always brand new. In this moment here, those regrets, what you did, doesn't exist unless you start thinking about it. You bring it here. It doesn't chase after you, you bring it here. When you're really, really present, you start to understand, yes, I am a result of everything I've done in the past, but I am not my past. I am whatever, I'm, how I am relating to what I'm experiencing right now. Yeah. So right now, you're just sitting in a room. That's your life. <laughs> it doesn't sound too exciting, does it? <laughs> but that's it. That's the complexity of your life at the moment. It's that complex. Now, if we start to really align ourselves with the present, and this feeling of past and future drops away, we start to notice that the present itself is still vast and tranquil. Almost like the space in this room. There's more space in this room than there is anything else. The space in this room we never take any notice of. But you look, the space in this room is still, it's tranquil, it's peaceful, and we're moving around within that space, aren't we? So we're events within that space. But the space itself never stops being tranquil, peaceful, still, does it? We can't disturb it. In the same way, when you're really, really <coughs> present, you start to realise that the present is still, deep, still, tranquil, peaceful and life is a flow of experiences that goes through that. It's a flow of experiencing experiences going through that. And you start to notice that when you're practicing, every time you sit down to meditate, it's different. You've got a flow going through, like watching a river running through. It's different all the time. Yeah? What happens is generally we identify with that flow. We grab onto things and we try to hang on to it as it goes past, as it's flowing through, that experience is flowing through, and then we try to keep it here right now. And that causes pain because it's changing, it's flowing. Now, if you have got regrets in your life about things that you've done, If you think about them, if they come up in your life now, do you feel 
uncomfortable? Does that cause pain? Sits in your heart, doesn't it? Yeah, it creates a bit of an empty feeling. Everything is like this. If we experience stress or anxiety or any of these things, when we're identifying with that flow, right, we're actually focusing towards something that no longer exists. What you did doesn't exist. It only exists to you in your head. It doesn't exist. So there's an endless frustration thinking about that. There's an endless frustration worrying about that, regretting that. I should have, I should have, I could have. Maybe if I'd done this, maybe if I'd done that. All these sort of regrets. But we're regretting something that doesn't exist, except for a memory in your head, in our head. Of course it's just a memory. The memory is ex being experienced as content of the present. The memory is being experienced right now. But the memory is just a sign that's pointing towards something that no longer exists. It's like being on your computer and you're clicking on a link, but the link doesn't go anywhere. How frustrating is that? Do you know what I mean? Click here for this wonderful download. You'll save heaps of money. Click. Doesn't go anywhere. What's going on? In the same way when you're stuck in these thoughts and you're reliving these thoughts and again, 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 trying to work out how to solve this problem, it's a dead link. It doesn't go to anywhere that exists. You can't actually change it. Anything that has happened, has happened. That's it. Finished. Can't go back. It's not back to the future just yet. We can't go back and change it. It's finished. Doesn't exist. You frustrate yourself. You will torture yourself, torment yourself. Same with futures of the future, worrying about the future. What, what if this happens? What if that happens? It doesn't exist. You're turning your attention towards a sign that's pointing towards something that doesn't actually exist. This is the cause of stress. This is the cause of pain in our life trying to run our lives thinking about things that don't exist and we have no control about. Now you're sitting here listening to a Dharma talk. So this is called Dharma talk. So Dharma is reality, talking about reality. Yeah? If you hadn't done those things in your life that you regret, you probably wouldn't be here. Every decision you made throughout your life brought you to this room. Every decision. Decisions you made when you were a five-year-old, whether I would actually play with this toy or I'd give it to my friend. The party that you went to that you shouldn't have. Yeah? Everything throughout your life, it doesn't matter what it was, Every little decision, every little intention has driven you here. You are here because of that. And that's how it's supposed to be. So quite often things that we think, oh, this is bad that we did that. Maybe it's actually a good thing. Maybe it's trying to teach us something. Maybe it's actually trying to drive us somewhere. Like a cattle, like a sheepdog herding the sheep. You're getting herded in a certain direction, herded towards reality. Because every time we feel that pain, we're actually feeling reality. Now being very, very present means that you'll start to feel things that you maybe don't want to feel. And so what happens is we don't like being very present because being present means being with that past pain. And so what we're basically doing is we're spending our whole life trying to not be present 
so we don't have to feel the things that we regret or feel the things in our life that hurt us, that we had a reaction to. Yeah, so as you start to become more and more present, it's like, oh, this isn't comfortable. You ever try being at home and just doing nothing? Or being somewhere and just doing nothing? I mean, absolutely nothing. Not reading a book, not watching TV, not listening to a radio, not thinking about lofty thoughts about things. It's quite difficult, isn't it? And you get really, really restless. Why? Why? Because we're used to being busy. <laughs> but why? Because that's... Why? Tick. Why do we have that drive to be busy? Oh, it's lovely when you get lose it. <laughs> yeah, why? <laughs> yeah, but why? <laughs> we, keep, we keep busy because we don't want to experience what's really there. Big and you experience... <laughs> Well, we are, we program ourselves. But you will experience it as, say, loneliness. Suddenly when you stop, you realise you quite, haven't got quite as many friends as you thought you did. And they're not quite as close as what you thought they were. You start to feel stuff like that, don't you? Loneliness in your heart. In different ways. All this other stuff starts coming up when you're really, really still. And that's what you'll find in the practice. So what we need to do is when this stuff starts coming up, realise that it's not bad, it's actually good. Going through that stuff is good. But what we have to do is watch the way we relate to that. So what we do is we stay very, very present and the concentration is helping that and be very mindful of the content flowing through this presence, coming and going. It's changing all the time and just be with it but try to sit in the stillness of being very very present and that last meditation you might start to feel that we start to go deeper and deeper you become more and more present more and more still sit within that stillness and allow whatever is to be not trying to change anything push anything away allow it to be and this allows everything to start flowing and the process starts healing within itself you're changing your relationship to it. And the more present you become, right, the more healing happens. The more we start to be comfortable with ourselves and we have no regrets or longings. So yeah. you've got something that, that you're concerned about and it just keeps coming. May not be a big thing, but it's something. And then you get that little surge, a little surge of adrenaline every time you think about it. Look, you just look at it, do you? Is that how you overcome it? Okay, I was going to ask for volunteers. I'm just feeling this. Just a second. Okay, want to come up? Okay. So just hold that glass. Now close your eyes. What's your experience of the glass? It's cool. So you're feeling coolness? Mm -hmm. Solid. Solidness? Heaviness, probably? Mm -hmm. Can you feel hardness? Yes. Yeah? And some, no, some, too hard someone, yeah, but hardness is just an experience. Someone yesterday told me they could feel softness, a little bit of softness. Because it softens into your hand, really. Ah, but you can't feel your hand. Okay. So coolness. Hardness, heaviness. Yeah? Okay. Somebody else? Need another person. Linda? <laughs> if somebody else doesn't come up, we're going to be here all day. Because I need this to help answer your question. So, your experience? Coolness. And hardness. I can feel vibration. Can you feel heaviness? Yes, there's yeah. some heaviness there. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. To answer your question, you can see I knew that you were going to ask it. 
<laughs> My experience of this, see I'm being a magician here, I should have written it on a bit of paper. My experience of this is coolness, hardness, heaviness, I can feel some softness. That's my experience of the glass of water. The experience of this glass of water is the same for everyone. The story about this glass of water is different for everyone. These are my glasses of water. Nobody come and drink this water. This is mine. It's my water. Yeah, it's mine. Yeah? When I bring these glasses home and put them in the cupboard, we might have some guests over. This might be their glass. Not my glass, it's theirs. I won't drink out of their glass, only out of my glass. But for all of us picking up the glass, we all experience it as coolness, hardness, heaviness, maybe softness, maybe vibration. But we all experience it the same way. Whether our skin is white or black, whether we're tall or short, whether we're considered beautiful or unattractive, rich, poor, well-dressed, not well-dressed, Buddhist, Muslim, Christian, atheist, I don't know what I am, whatever it is, we all experience it exactly the same way. On the level of reality, all human beings experience everything, the whole world, exactly the same way. On the level of story about that experience, it is different for everyone. When we're really, really present, we experience the world at the level of reality. That means when we're really, really present, we experience the world how everyone experiences it. At this level, there is no story. There is no ownership. There is no me, I. And there is no glass. Because hardness is not heaviness, is it? Is hardness coolness? Is hardness softness? Is hardness vibration? Is heaviness coolness? Is heaviness hardness? Can you see? We're not even experiencing heaviness, coolness, hardness. We're experiencing this and this and this. Our brain interprets heaviness, coolness, hardness as a cup, as a glass full of water. And so the story begins. And this is its job. But at the level of reality, there's individual experiences. When those experiences come in a certain sequence, we have been trained to interpret them a certain way. As a human being, that's how we experience the world, even in sound, even in sight, in everything. If you're really present, it's just as these elements. At the level of the story, it doesn't matter what you believe. You can believe in God, you can not believe in God. You can believe in rebirth, you can not believe in rebirth. You can believe in getting rich, you can believe you're always going to be poor. It doesn't matter what your story is. That story is just around to help you live your life in a certain way, aligning with what you believe. And also so we can all get on, or sometimes so we can all fight over our stories. But in reality, those stories are just stories that are overlaid over reality, which is just heaviness, hardness, coolness. Can you see? 
What happens, Bart, is we start to believe the story is real. We identify with the story. We identify, identify with the content of the present rather than the being present itself. As you become more and more mindful and more and more present, you start to notice the flow of the content. The content changes and your story throughout your life has changed and it will continue to change. Your story is always changing. It's not fixed, it's not permanent. When you become very, very mindful, very, very present, you sit within that stillness and watch the flow of the story. But you don't believe the story. You can play with the story, you can have fun with the story, you can identify with a story that suits you and your life, but the story doesn't control you. Yet if you look at in the world, people are killing each other at the moment over their story. And they're killing each other because their story doesn't match other people's story. See, it's like little children. Little children fighting over something that's not real. We fight over our stories, over our opinions, over our views, and they're not real. They're stories about this. The stories are coming out of our perception. The way our brain is interpreting coolness, hardness, heaviness, movement, vibration, dry, wet, whatever, just these experiences. Our brain is interpreting it through trained perception. Hence, people can actually be trained to perceive things in all different ways. And then they believe the story is true, and then they die over it. Or we argue over it. When you understand this, you no longer feel the need to actually argue your view or give your opinion. Because you realise it's just a level of story. And so that's what we're doing at the practice. We're getting down below the level of story. So you see what's real and then your relationship changes to these things. Then irritation just becomes content in the present. Anxiety just becomes content. Fears just content. Love, kindness, generosity also content. Everything's just content. But none of them actually change who you are, doesn't change that presence. Yeah. So you just want to close your eyes over lightly? Just bring your awareness into your body. Now like the glass, what is the experience of the feeling of your body? What are the individual experiences that you call body? Also be aware of any sounds. Be aware of the feeling of the breathing. It's all just content in being very present.
Now I'd like you to relax into the experience of the present. Relax into the sounds. Right? Relax into the sensations, the thoughts, the judgments. Just allowing each breath to relax you deeper and deeper so you become more and more present. Notice the content of right now is flowing, it's changing. Notice how you have no control over that content.
how present can you be? Okay, you can gently open your eyes. So in answer to your question, how do you deal with these things? You ground your awareness in your body, be mindful of your body, align yourself with the experience of your body, with the sensations. Whatever you're experiencing will manifest in your body as sensations. You pick out the individual elements and go, oh, this is tightness, that is warmth, that is movement, that is tension. They're not the same thing. They're separate things. They're events. They're not that feeling. Or well, they don't, that feeling, the name of the feeling that you're getting, whether it's anxiousness or anxiety, is the story about the experience. It is not the experience. The word anxiety is a story. Can you see? It's a story. We give it these stories, but we believe the story, like we talk about the weather. The weather is a story about a whole lot of changing events. The weather is not a thing. Stress is not a thing. Anxiety is not a thing. Grief is not a thing. It's a series of experiences that we put one label over the top, a story over the top. And then once we put that word on it and call it that, instead of breaking it up, then we start writing a script about why it's there. But it's just there. It's just an experience flowing through right now. So all you have is right now. That's it. All you have ever had is right now. And all you will ever have in the whole of your life is right now right now is still it's present it's unchanging the content of your life is flowing through that the content of your life is the flow of experiences within that and when you leave this room that content will be different again and this will no longer exist 